Hello, and welcome to Making Sense of It. Do you ever wonder why you do the things you do? Well, this program is for you. Uh, Dr. Glasser has many, many wonderful concepts, and uh, we delve into them by one of our speakers that has that is uh, certified in reality therapy and choice theory. So this program is our gift to you from the Glasser Institute for Choice Theory. So our speaker today is Dave Hancock, and he is a professor in or a retired professor in Cleveland, Ohio. And Dave has been after me for a while because he just wants to share from his heart on some personal and some professional communications with Dr. Glasser. But he is having trouble with his audio so or with the video. So we only have him in audio today, but I'm going to put a picture up so you can see him. In the meantime, welcome everyone and welcome Dave. We're ready for you to take it away. Well, hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, Dave Hancock, I was a teacher uh, on Cleveland Heights, uh, University Heights, Cleveland Heights High School, Dr. Glasser's alma mater from 1968 to 2003. And I first met uh, Dr. Glasser. I was the image maker's advisor inducted to the Hall of Fame in 1987. He visited my classroom, which he did tell me it was a quality classroom, quality school teacher. And we had an induction ceremony, the Hall of Fame. And again, it was 1987. And uh, basically, my first book I read from graduating uh, Kent State University in 1968 was Schools Without Failure. That was the first book I read, and that was 1969, the copyright of his book. And frequently, we would communicate, uh, very frequently, uh, when we met uh, from 1987 to, oh, gee whiz, about 2003. And again, he uh, went to a Case Institute of Technology, which is now Case Western Reserve University. He had an engineering degree at age 19. He just didn't like it, and he went into uh, psychology. And uh, a psychiatry professor uh, had an interview with him, and he changed to psychiatry. And from reality therapy, it went followed from there. But the best example that I can say about external control psychology was when I was teaching a class at Brandeis, University uh, 1990, the summer, I read a headline in the Boston Globe, it said teacher sacked for girl's death, Tokyo, a teacher who accidentally killed a tardy student by closing the school gates as the girl tried to squeeze through will be fired and sent to prison, education authorities decided yesterday. They also agreed to discipline five other education officials in connection with the case, which has raised widespread criticism of the rigidity in many Japanese schools. Of course, uh, Japan is 99% Japanese. On July 6th, Tohisha Kohose closed the front gate of the Hokkyo Perfectional Kasura Senior High School in Kobe, 270 miles west of Tokyo, promptly at 8.30 a.m. What if uh, Pavlov would have used a cat instead of a dog? Or what about B.F. Skinner's pigeons? In an effort to teach students a lesson about coming to school on time, he accidentally caught a student who was crushed to death. I had a student in my biology class, Wiley Junior High, back in 1985-86. He wrote me a note, a letter, thou shalt not forget to write. She was, uh, uh, let's see, a, a freshman student at that time. Dear Mr. Hancock, uh, hello, but she wrote it in Japanese. I have been in Japan for almost four weeks. 
it certainly is different from America. Everyone is really nice and I'm having a good time. School is going fine also. High school students here are really different. They're all shy and giggly. To me, they seem pretty immature. They are really friendly though. They don't go out at night at all. Dating does not start until college. If a boy or a girl talk to each other alone, they are boyfriend and girlfriend at the beginning and end of each class. The students must, they must stand and bow. Can you imagine high students doing that? Blah, 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 blah. The best example of external control psychology that I, that I can just determine, and I share that with students in terms of Dr. Glasser's book. And I've read every book, every word, of every paragraph of every book. And again, the first one, Schools Without Failure, uh, which is so true. And all the chapters in there uh, are uh, applicable to today, or 16 of them, but mainly the ones on classroom management, classroom meetings, and good relationship with our students. I, I don't think I ever had a discipline problem. It's all on perception and attitude. Attitude, uh, one of the best ones I've heard uh, about read about that as a way our way of thinking a t t i t u d e and we would often say be a proton be positive don't be an electron be negative but attitude you write that down on the uh, on the overhead or transmit or just say it a t t i t u d e a is the first letter of the alphabet t is the 20th t is the 20th i is the ninth t is the 20th U is the 21st, D is the 4th, and E is the 5th. Add those up, the position of the letter in the alphabet. Adds up to 100, right on the dot. So with, 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 with my 8th or ninth grade science class, that, I'd take most of the period, all right, right out, <laughs> A through C, and oh my gosh, attitude. How important is attitude? Well, 100% in the most... Uh, the most important 10 two letter words in the out and the, the 10 most two letter important words if it is to be, it is up to me or us. The 10 most powerful 10 two letter words. And I would recommend, oh, read my book, uh, Black Students, White Teacher, Ruminations and Lamentations. The Influence of Culture on Teaching, Learning, and Education is a self-published book. And my first letter to the other, Cleveland Plain Dealer, it's a compendium of 100 letters to, I've written since 1990 to the Cleveland Plain Dealer, Chagrin Valley Times, and our local papers, letters to the editor. There's 100 of them in there. And uh, I would encourage, encourage that because every penny goes to uh, teacher education student grants. I'm, I get five dollars for every book, and every penny goes to uh, K to 12 teacher education grants, uh, mainly uh, outdoor education, nature study, equipment and supplies. And I did teach nature study at Cleveland Heights High School uh, for many years. And we had a local park, Kane Park, three blocks away from the school, which was very nice. So birds, trees, wildflowers, those were our tweets. I never gave homework. And matter of fact, 1901, homework was illegal in the United States in many places. If you read the book, The End of Homework, I forget the uh, authors. But uh, uh, nature study, uh, uh, discovery learning, specimens, birds, trees, wildflowers, music. Uh, I never gave a test, a memory test. Uh, never gave homework. I said uh, an open house, uh, parents laughed at this one. Uh, homework, uh, clean your room, do the dishes, cut the grass, uh, shovel snow, uh, help cook. That's your homework. It's classwork, not homework. So with Dr. Glasser, we met many times. His brother lived in University Heights. So when he was in town in the Menor area, uh, he had a couple colleagues there, and we did some programs 
uh, and Carlene was with them at that time uh, on at different locations on mental health. Of course, his, uh, his book, uh, Warning, Psychiatry Can Be Hazardous to Your Mental Health. And as we know, Dr. Glasser never prescribed a psychotropic drug. ADHD is out of the question. That's a myth. It was kind of introduced so big pharma maybe could uh, Adderall, Concerta, Ritalin, et cetera. Uh, however, one of the best uh, examples about learning and teaching is uh, Dr. Glasser said, we learn 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, 30% of what we see, 50% of what we both see and hear, 70% of what is discussed with others. 80% of what we experience personally, and 95% of what we teach to someone else. And in my classes, it was open book. Uh, they would get small groups to test together. No multiple guests, A, B, C, D, E. Because if you want to do that, do A, B, and C, then D would be A and B, but not C. And E would be A, B, D, but not, you know, you know <laughs> it's discombobulating. Oh, Mr. Hancock, you give a test, you know. Uh, no, so I never, uh, I did when I first started. Uh, after a few years, I had no tests, no homework. I'm glad I had tenure. Uh, well, administration is a little different story, but uh, I'm glad I had tenure. Uh, freedom of speech uh, was much freer then, and uh, that was great. So uh, being a tenured public school teacher, um, that, that's the way to do it, because obviously, uh, with the administration uh, battles, the war on children, you know, our famous education president who said, is our children learning? Okay, yeah, yeah, our education president. And then 1983 hysteria, a nation at risk. Right, okay. Uh, who is responsible for your behavior? Whose behavior can you control? Fine. Is my doctor responsible for my health? Uh, well, no. Am I responsible for your learning? Well, I'm responsible for teaching. You're responsible for learning, and I'll do the best I can to help you. So, uh, again, when it comes to that, there are so many areas that we can apply, uh, as we've been discussing. And Dr. Glasser's uh, quality school, managing students without coercion. This quality school teacher, which is a companion volume to the quality school. Excellent book, Every Student Can Succeed. As a matter of fact, in my nature study class, I was very fortunate during my teaching career. I had many student teachers and field experiences from our local colleges. I was a student teacher supervisor uh, at several of them. There's Baldwin Wallace, John Carroll, Notre Dame College, and a Lakeland Community College uh, back in 1994. It's an honor and pleasure of being with Dr. Glasser, Wayne Dyer, and myself. We each uh, were on a panel and we went into our separate areas after the main speech by uh, uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer. And Dr. Glasser did. Uh, uh, the education part, and then I, I was the satellite, or I did the classroom teaching education uh, part with uh, Wayne Dyer and Dr. Glasser. It was very uh, uh, inspiring to, to do that. I was the Lakeland Community College. And then uh, even Richard Carlson's books, uh, The Don't Sweat series, uh, he has a great book don't sweat the small stuff with teachers or the don't sweat guide for teachers that's an excellent one it's our attitude and perception we, we, we're creating problems many boss management teachers all right the lethal habits that they use uh get out of teaching you could have a phd and can't teach children math maybe einstein would not be a good physics teacher uh i don't know but he wouldn't be able to teach physics because he doesn't have a license or a licensure. So again, there's teacher reform, you know, William Hazlitt had a great one, oxymoron. It is essential to the triumph of a reform that it should never succeed. So we're, yeah, we're gonna reform, reform, just do it. Just simply do it with tenure, of course. 
private pro so that's a little different there you have to lie a lot of that. Uh, every student can succeed and then his uh, quality school approach to character education and competency based classroom pamphlet is excellent and again uh, well in terms of those ideas uh, if uh, more teachers are like that uh, in my uh, 35 years of experience plus uh, 30 years experience as an adjunct professor at several local colleges teaching uh, biology, biology lab and genetics and microbiology lab and environmental issues. Uh, I had many students uh, from uh, uh, class who are teachers now and I, I'm glad I saved all my letters and cards that I received from them. I see them every now and then. A teacher, uh, well, Henry Adams, a, a teacher affects eternity. You can never tell where his or her influence stops. And we remember our good teachers. They were inspiring. That's probably why we we're doing what we're doing today. And we remember our bad teachers who shouldn't have been teaching, but they were, had an influence of, you know, I had a bad biology teacher, but I, he or she did not. Uh, discouraged me from learning biology and going into science. I kind of knew that in kindergarten back in 1950. So as a first year baby boomer, <laughs> 1946, uh, it, it kind of makes sense. And as Eagle Scout, Nature Study Merit Badge was one of my first ones. So uh, career, if we can determine the interests of students and most of them, like I say, in science, I had 15 to 18 to 20 students, very fortunate, with some student teachers, a doctor, a nurse, a doctor, Florence Nightingale type uh, person. So when it comes to those items and those uh, environmental situations, uh, science uh, really, uh, well, I had two uh, former students, one in biology, had him dissect all the fetal pigs and frogs and cat and everything. And I say, Joe, you'd make a great surgeon. Well, guess what? He graduated uh, almost, Mr. Hancock, you'd be proud of me. I almost graduated uh, last in the class at Case Western University Med School, and he took out my gallbladder, cholecystectomy. I had another one, a hernia operation I had, and he was the anesthesiologist. I remember him saying, Mr. Hancock, if I didn't get an A in your class, uh, you'd be having a headache trying to wake up. But uh, that, that's the beauty of uh, teaching and when you uh, are positive influence on teachers. And in many of my classes, they were all A's. Something like Mitch Album did. Uh, I taught in uh, uh, Tuesdays uh, with Maury, Mitch Album, Maury Schwartz's uh, book, uh, and Maury Schwartz's classroom at Brandeis that summer. And when the administration was giving them difficulty on the draft and the midterm grades and everything, Maury Schwartz and the sociology department said, well, you know what, we'll take care of that. We're not going to give uh, uh, midterms. And the administration really come down pretty hard on them, coercing them to do it. And they got, you know what, he gave Molly's. I forget what chapter's that in, you'll see that in Maury. Uh, at Mitch Alvin's book, Tuesdays with Maury, gave them always. I had many classes always. <laughs> so, <laughs> because there are no tests and quizzes, your grade's not based on your memory. And, you know, 100 to 90, no one's perfect. Start at 98 and go to 88%. Or what percent of your grade's this? What percent of the grade's that? We must get away, and I'm finally seeing that, away from factory model assembly line learning. Sit down on your chair, lecture, take notes, read, review, study, memorize, take tests, ingest, regurge, forget. You know, I have a great memory. I can't remember forgetting anything. Well, guess what? Just for the grade, what's my grade? Well, I think it should be assessment, evaluation, 20% on, on your lab, uh, with 30% uh, on your project. It was 25% uh, on your group work lab reports, et cetera. And the best thing to do is have your students teach. 
I'd say, Joe or Jane, come on up here and play teacher. We trade places. Here, here's a genetic problem. Explain that to the class. Here's the pen, overhead projector. A uh, blue-eyed woman marries a brown-eyed man. They have four children. What's the chance of probability of having blue eye, brown eye? You know, the whole work. They really got involved in that and engaged them in a positive way. And our humor is very important. Laughter, humor, joking around. Uh, there's one, I remember one time at open house, uh, uh, I had, uh, more the principal said, Dave, you have more parents than anyone in that, any faculty in the building. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, ninth grade biology, I taught biology and co-ed sex education. And one of the parents said, Mr. Hancock, uh, thanks for getting us off the hook at home with your sex class because it was co-ed and all the facts were there. And I, I had a, a obstetrician gynecologist parent who gave me uh, embryos, fetuses, slides of everything at, to supplement the curriculum because sometimes the finances were uh, there. So he, he gave me a thousand dollars plus specimens from Case Western University uh, med school, uh, slides, microscope slides, the whole works. So engaging parents, they get to know you. Uh, we didn't have, if I would have had these toys that we have today in technology, we had pen, pencil, and paper, I'd still be in kindergarten. Uh, I, I mean, there's just no, but I still feel like I am in kindergarten. I think I could probably teach kindergarten right now with three grandchildren, but they wouldn't let me in the school probably. So, uh, well, anyway, that's basically it. It's uh, in terms of uh, implementing Dr. Glasser's educational psychology and philosophy into teaching. I don't know what he would say today uh, in terms of we can still be a quality school teacher in a Saddam spider hole a dump we can still be a quality school teacher however it is difficult in some of the buildings that are 75 80 years old with the heating cooling air, air conditioning lighting and things of that nature okay day thank you very much you gave us some things to really think about i especially enjoyed your attitude a hundred percent whenever you equate them with all the the values of the letters in the in the string yeah thank you and, and then your your 10 words the 10 two yeah if it is words, to be yeah. it is up to me yeah 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 that's a or real us, powerful, uh, that's a real powerful directive that we can take and realize that that it is that we're responsible for that and i also right. really appreciated the homework that the, the child's homework was to clean your room feed the dog <laughs> <love> you <are. laughs> Right, exactly. Parents love that one. Well, some didn't like that because <laughs> they get home, oh, uh, 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 get started on your homework. You know, on a bus with a backpack. We never had that stuff. We had pen, pencil, and paper. I don't know. I never rode a school bus because school was a mile. So I'd walk to school and ride my bike sometimes. And that unbelievable. I will see these students with a backpack. Are you going to school or camping? Again, if uh, B.F. Skinner's pigeons, if Pavlov would have used a cat instead of a dog, much different results. Definitely so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't care what. <laughs> if you read uh, B.F. Skinner's book on behaviorism, that's great. And Heim Gano was another one who was the Dr. Glasser cohort on teacher and child. Uh, his book, Heim Gano, same uh, copyright, 1969. That was the second book I read uh, right after Schools Without Failure. And that is true. Yeah. No need to fail. You know, you learn by failing. And the group work science is really great. I mean, music and art, Howard Gardner's multiple intelligences, we can in, uh, implement those in any subject, but science, especially. Uh, your lab partner, we had two, three, or four in a group, the so-called cooperative learning. Well, okay, pro project-based learning. Okay, that, yeah. that's fine also, no matter okay. what we call it. Okay, yeah. And in your Teamwork. looking at the fact that, that uh, the mechanical learning to ingest 
regurgitate right. and forget. <laughs> but <Right. laughs> following following the schools without failure and so forth is to self evaluate, teach, learn, and remember, so that it becomes right. a part of who you are. Well, thank you. Yeah. Time. And we're going to turn. We're going to stop the airwaves. And uh, okay. Thank you for your for your uh, input and uh, many blessings to everyone. Good mental health.